Hey cats, it's Ed, Marty McFly, Bud here. 2020 and 2021 have seen some huge leaps in terms of running shoe technology. We've had AirPods, gigantic things underneath your foot, people called springs, carbon fiber shanks and plates in the midsole, even glass fiber rods as well. If someone told me that that was gonna be a thing this year, I would have laughed them out the building. We've even had Bluetooth devices embedded into the shoes. But what's next guys? In today's video, I'm going to speculate as to what could be on the horizon in our running shoes for 2022 and beyond. Thanks for joining me here at Edbud Running Shoe Reviews, guys. It's very, very appreciated. I'm still operating with one hand at the moment due to a bit of a running related injury. I'll be back soon, though. Don't you worry. I'm not worried. You, you worried? How about you at the back? You, you worried? No? Okay. I think we're okay. Make sure, if you haven't done so already, to hit that subscribe button, but also click the bell below for notifications and when we drop those new videos for you. And it really helps the channel out a huge amount too if you give this video a thumbs up like. Merci beaucoup. So to get an idea of what sort of technologies we might expect to see in 2022 and beyond, today I'm going to channel my inner Chriswell and Mystic Meg. I think it's always a good idea to examine the current basketball models that certain manufacturers have released. They tend to use their basketball models as a bit of a test bed to experiment with new shoe technologies. Everybody talks about those dual AirPods in the AlphaFly and how they're like springs and they should be, you know, banned and all this type of stuff. They've been in basketball shoes for ages. No one bats an eyelid about them over there. You know, is that aiding people to score more points? You know, can they dunk easier? Can they get more spring and get up to the rim? No one questions that at all. They're still putting in the effort. They still have to have the legs to actually get them there. Those dual AirPods still appear in the Zoom Freak 3 that Nike recently released. I think they're the chosen shoe of the famous Giannis Adent Compo. I did look up how to say it and apparently that's how he says it. So I think that's probably the right way. They use a whole different variety of foams in basketball shoes. They don't seem to be too bothered about Zoom X right now. It's all about React and Phylon. So I think my first prediction will be that Nike will continue to sandwich foams together to create special, unique underfoot experiences. We've seen it a little bit already in the Vomero 16 where they've got ZoomX, uh, another foam, and then some AirPods, and smush them all together into this big sort of marshmallow of fun. We're actually seeing that, though, in use right now in the AirZoom GT Run. So this has got two air units, but also two layers of foam. It comprises of a React sock liner or insole. I think that's another thing that Nike will do over the course of this year. We've seen it in the Tempo Next Percent, where they use Crush Zoom X as the insole. You've then got a Zoom Air unit, which is kind of in the midfoot and forefoot. Another layer of React and a further Zoom Air section as well. Got loads of ridges on that very flexible outsole section too. That's always a really key factor in a running shoe. But I think it's the sandwich of foams here that interests me the most. Undoubtedly, they're going to have to strip back some of the foam, perhaps decrease the height of the AirPods a little bit. It might just be a little bit too heavy to utilize like that in a running shoe. I think it could make a fantastic long run shoe or perhaps a piece of footwear for easy days, perhaps recovery sessions as well. I think that sandwich of foams could be ideal. I think we'll continue to see Nike double stacking or at least experimenting with double stacking those Zoom Air units, perhaps incorporating Zoom X foam around them to provide a bit more resilience, a bit more structure to the shoe. Otherwise, it's just going to be way, way too compressive. I think the big advantage of Zoom Air units, rather than just utilizing foam itself, is you get that energy return. I mean, it's unmatched in the Air Zoom units that you get on the Alpha Fly. I'm pretty sure they confirmed that the reason they put those in there was because after a certain point that Kipchoge reckoned that the foam was starting to bottom out somewhat. Although we know he's moved back to the next percent now. Maybe it's more of a contractual thing that he's chosen to use the next percent over the Alpha Fly. I'm sure when the second one comes out, Elliot will be rocking those. You know it. I think those AirPods just return to shape and spring back a little bit more. I said the bad word, spring. You can't say that. People get very upset. They return to shape quicker than perhaps even Zoom X itself. 
interesting that all the GT basketball shoes state that they've been refined using some of the research and data that was collected when Nike did the whole Breaking 2 and Vaporfly 4% development. So I think that's pretty much where all the info comes from. Even the latest Air Jordan shoe here features some similar tech. Again, a Zoom Air strobe board beneath the foot. Very different to the hard boards that we used to see in the Jordan 4, 5 and 6. You get those in the retros too, in the Jordan 5 that I picked up last year. Yeah, it's pretty tough under there once you take out that polyurethane insert. It's been a very common running shoe trend recently where they seem to want to disconnect or decouple the forefoot and the heel. I mean, you see it here in the Tempo Next Percent, there's a very significant cutout there in the middle section of the outsole and the midsole. I think in the Jordan shoe that they've used some sort of p plate. It says plastic, but I'm not sure what it is. Just another stabilizing element there to stop that midfoot from twisting too much. Of course, the current Adidas range of shoes incorporates a very similar system. Let's look to Adidas's basketball shoes now and see if there's any tech that could appear next year in their running lineup. The next level future natural seems relatively standard in the midsole cushion, but I think it's far more interesting when we look at the upper of the shoe. A laceless design is surely not far off in terms of a running shoe. That could give the runner some sort of upper fit dependent on the requirements. We all know that uppers can get a little restrictive when you get too hot, when your foot swells, and the reverse as well when your foot gets too cold. Perhaps even over distance it could sort of adjust itself a little bit just to maintain the right level of lockdown. You got a sock-like upper fit here, which echoes a comment I recently made about the Alpha Fly, where it's so snug and the lockdown was so good on top of the foot that you barely needed any laces. I'm sure the big running brands are working on such technology right now as we speak. Some of the race uppers on the top super shoes are already fantastic, like pillow like and so light as well. Perhaps a merging of both the upper and part of the midsole there could provide an even better lockdown, just a more superior foot hugging feel without the shoehorn, of course. I think that would kind of benefit people that were doing triathlons as well. They want to get their shoes on very quickly, not have to fool around with laces or toggles. Even with toggles, it can sometimes feel a little bit of a faff, you know, it just takes too long. And as someone at the moment that can't really do shoes up very easily because I've only got one hand, that would be a really big boon. If you guys are interested in me testing out one of the fly ease options from Nike, please let me know down in the comments. That's the excuse I'm using at the moment anyway as to why I'm not lacing up my Jordan 1s. I think one of the most underrated running shoes of this year, certainly from my perspective, has got to be the Under Armour Flow Velocity Win. I do kind of wish though there was a version of the shoe where they'd removed the Bluetooth section that's in the midsole just made the shoe that tiny bit lighter i mean it's pretty light as it is very nimble with superb outsole grip and that was minus the rubber that you normally get on the outsole of a running shoe i would not be surprised to see a follow-up shoe from under armor with a few small refinements there hitting the shells very soon under armor have experimented with p-back shank elements in some of their other shoes, most recently the Future X basketball shoe. I think they've inserted that to improve some stability. So why not perhaps the same idea to boost the rigidity and aid in terms of the running cycle with their Flow Velocity series? Not a carbon plate, but something with a little bit of rigidity there to bring it sort of in line perhaps with the Zoom Fly 4 or even the Saucony Endorphin Speed as well. I'm telling you now guys, this is a great shoe. One that's gonna be sorely missed and overlooked by a lot of runners. I'm sure that UA will utilize that flow material plus some sort of stabilizing shank or plate in the near future. Perhaps a shoe aimed at those higher paced chops, perhaps for racing or tempo work, utilizing the same flow midsole material. I don't think they need to do much to the grip on the outsole, it's already fantastic in the flow velocity wind and it will provide a really nice alternative to those cookie cutter carbon plate models that we got right now. So just a few ideas for the future here, guys. Very much me speculating about what could happen. Of course, I could be completely wrong. It has happened before and it will happen again. Let me know what you expect to see in the 2022 running shoe models down in the comments. 
a quick musical interlude for you. I've been digging back into the past again, back to around about 1988 now. A couple of tunes I've been listening to today that I really, really enjoyed. I think I had about three or four copies of them at the time. A 7 inch 12, maybe even a tape as well. It's from S Express. Superfly Guy and Hey Music Lover. Both fantastic, well-produced tracks here. They actually stand the test of time very well. Some wonderful Roland TB303 acidy type bass lines on Hey Music Lover and some banging beats. Some really nice disco-y vibes as well on the other track, Superfly Guy. Music of such interest. Just something a little bit different. Never felt like it was a cookie cutter type track, pulling pieces from all sorts of different musical genres and putting them together into this big steaming pot of goulash. Definitely a quite heavy disco vibe in there, which I really enjoy. Go and check these out, guys. You may never have heard of Us Express. If that's the case, then you've been missing out. Thanks for sticking with me to the end of today's video, guys. I really appreciate it. Help the channel out a huge amount by subscribing to the channel, also hitting that notification bell so we can inform you when the new videos launch. And the biggest thing you can do is give this video a thumbs up like and share it with your running buddies. My name's Ed Bud, and I'll be seeing you.